Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brain Bean here again, back with another keyboard comparison video for you. I know you guys really enjoy these types of videos and over the years I've amassed every single Razer keyboard that they've released in probably the last two to three years. Certainly everything that they currently offer on their store online. And so what I wanted to do was go over basically their entire current catalog of keyboards and sort of talk about the features and where they stack up in the lineup. Now this isn't meant to be a review video where I talk about what's good and what's bad with each one because I've individually reviewed all of these keyboards already. And if you wanna see any of those reviews, I'll of course link them down in the description below for you, as well as do my best to timestamp each keyboard in this video. So if you wanna skip around, that's certainly something that you will be able to do because I imagine it's gonna be kind of a long video. But what we're gonna do is just start at the most affordable keyboard. And I figured we'd just work our way up in price and get all the way up to the big expensive flagship models. And just talk about some of the features that they each have and hopefully this will help you guys out if you're either looking at purchasing a new keyboard or you're just curious as to what's going on with the Razer lineup right now. And just do a quick comparison for you guys. So with that, let's get started with the Razer Sinosa. The Razer Sinosa is available in two varieties, the Sinosa and the Sinosa Pro. But the only real difference between the two is that the Pro version has a light bar that wraps around the underside of the keyboard, which gives it a little bit of an underglow effect. The Sinosa is Razer's most budget-friendly keyboard, coming in at just 60 bucks for the regular version and 80 bucks for the Pro, although you can typically catch these on sale for a little bit less on Amazon these days. The Sinosa is a membrane keyboard, but it does give a snappy enough typing experience as can be expected from a membrane keyboard. The biggest selling point of the Sinosa is that it has full per-key RGB lighting, which is pretty rare at this price point. Now, up until the Sinosa's release, if you wanted to get the flashy per-key RGB that Razer is known for, you'd have to purchase one of the more expensive flagship keyboards. The Sinosa changed all that by offering an affordable entry point into the Synapse ecosystem. This alone makes the Sinosa a great option for those who want in-game integration with games like Apex Legends or Overwatch, but don't want to shell out a ton of money. Sure, objectively speaking, a mechanical option would be superior, but for those looking to not spend too much or people getting into PC gaming, this is a great budget keyboard. Like the Sinosa, the Ornata is available in two varieties. The Ornata Expert, which only has green lighting, and the Ornata Chroma, which, as the name would suggest, does have full per-key RGB lighting. Much like the Sinosa, you can typically find these on Amazon a little bit less than the MSRP, with the Ornata Chroma usually being offered around 80 bucks and the Expert at about 60. The Ornata is Razer's first hybrid keyboard, meaning that it's sort of a cross between mechanical and membrane, or as Razer calls it, the Mecha Membrane Keys. These Mecha Membrane Keys are essentially comprised of a slider that's part of the keycap over rubber domes with a clicking spring mechanism that gives off an audible click and a tactile feel similar to a mechanical switch. The typing experience on this one is pretty unique as you get the clicky tactile feeling but also the membrane squish at the end of the keystroke. The Ornata Chroma has full perky RGB lighting that looks really great thanks to the mid-height keys. The membrane underneath is made of a translucent plastic that gives the whole board a really full look to the lighting. I actually think the Ornata has some of the best looking lighting out of all of Razer's portfolio for this reason. In terms of extras, the Ornata was the first Razer keyboard to include a magnetic leatherette padded wrist rest that actually feels really great to use, and it's a nice inclusion at this price point. The Ornata could be a really good choice for those of you that are unsure if you'll like the feel of a true mechanical keyboard and want to try a nice middle ground first. The newest keyboard in Razer's lineup is the 2019 edition of the Black Widow. It's designed to fill the gap between the more entry-level boards that we just talked about and their more expensive flagships. The Black Widow does have its same familiar look to the chassis, although the plastic top cover is made of a different material than before. The Black Widow does come with Razer's newly updated green switches that are by far their best feeling switches to date thanks to their new sidewall construction. At this time, the Black Widow will only be offered with green switches, meaning that if you like the yellow or orange, you'll need to look at either the Black Widow Elite or the V2. Keeping with the Black Widow spirit, the 2019 Black Widow does have the classic white backplate behind the switches for that nice, vibrant, perky RGB that we've come to expect from the Black Widow line, so nothing new has changed on that front. 
Where there are major changes is the removal of the dedicated macro keys, USB pass-through and audio port, and unfortunately there's no wrist rest either. Although there are no dedicated macro keys on this one, you can use Razer's new HyperShift tech on this board to make any key a macro key. The Black Widow 2019 is a good choice for those who want a mechanical Razer keyboard but don't necessarily want all of the extras, and the price point does reflect that at 120 bucks. An oldie but a goodie, the Black Widow X was released a few years back and was quite popular with its exposed switch design and clean aesthetic. Much like the new Black Widow, the X is only offered in green switches, and other than the nice perky RGB, doesn't really come with any of the tangible extras of the other Black Widows like wrist rest, macro or media keys, or pass-throughs. The Black Widow X, however, does come in a few nice looking color options. It's available in mercury white, black, which is the one that you'll see here, and a gunmetal gray. Ultimately, this board's design is a bit dated, as it's objectively not as good as the newer Huntsman keyboard that is a step up in every way. The main selling point of the Black Widow X in my opinion at this point is the aesthetics, and it's currently the only white keyboard that Razer offers. The Black Widow X's pricing is currently around $120 on Amazon, and there is a 10 keyless tournament edition of this board as well. The Black Widow V2 is essentially last generation's flagship Black Widow. In fact, if you look at Razer's website, only the tournament edition of these boards are still listed, although you can still find them on Amazon. The V2 is a great keyboard. It comes with a slew of extras like the magnetic padded leatherette wrist rest that we saw introduced with the Ornata, some dedicated macro keys, and USB and audio pass-through. The V2 is the last Razer keyboard to actually include dedicated macro keys before they switched over completely to their HyperShift technology. The V2 has full perky RGB lighting and is offered in all three Razer switch types. In fact, the linear Razer yellow switch was actually launched with the release of this keyboard. Like I mentioned, the V2 is available in a full size version and 10 keyless version. The 10 keyless version also has a quartz pink option, which is one of two boards that Razer offers in this color. However, keep in mind the quartz version only comes with green switches. You can find the full size V2 on Amazon for a variety of prices due to availability, anywhere from 110 bucks to 160 bucks, and the tournament edition will run you about 130. The Black Widow Elite is the current flagship in the Black Widow line and came out just after the release of the Huntsman, and you can certainly see the influence in its design. It is basically the same chassis design with the exposed switches and the metal backplate. It also has the same dedicated media keys with the multifunction digital dial. The Black Widow Elite comes available in all three Razer Switch varieties from clicky green, linear yellow, and tactile orange, and the Black Widow Elite has the newly updated Razer Switches with the sidewalls, which are their best switches by far. As for other included extras, the Black Widow Elite has a USB and audio pass-through, the nice plush magnetic padded leatherette wrapped wrist rest, and of course the per-key RGB lighting. However, I think it's worth noting that like the Black Widow X, the Black Widow Elite does not have the white backplate behind the switches like all the other Black Widows do, which does reduce a little bit of the light flooding between the keys. The keycaps themselves are brilliantly lit, however, it's just a different aesthetic. The Black Widow Elite, much like the V2 that came before it, really packs in the extras. The only thing it's really missing is the tangible row of dedicated macro keys that the older versions had, which of course Razer has switched over in favor of their HyperShift technology. The Black Widow Elite has an MSRP of 150 bucks, which is pretty much where you're gonna find it anywhere in the internet at this time. The Black Widow Lite is part of Razer's new productivity suite that's taking a stab at the professional market. The Black Widow Lite has a 10 keyless design for portability and has an exposed switch design over a nice matte finished metal backplate. The board features Razer's orange switches for a nice tactile typing experience, minus the noise that comes with the greens, which could be a little bit more distracting in the workplace setting. The Black Widow Lite is the only Razer keyboard so far to include a keycap puller, and it does give you a set of O-rings to further dampen the sound of the switches that makes it even more workplace friendly. I like that it has a removable cable for easier transport, and while the Black Widow Lite is one of the only Razer products these days without RGB, I think it fits the purpose of this board nicely. And the soft white backlighting of the keyboard gives it a clean aesthetic overall that looks right at home in a professional setup. You can get the Black Widow Lite for around 75 bucks on Amazon right now. And lastly, that brings us to Razer's newest line of keyboard, the Huntsman. The Huntsman line of keyboards introduced their new optomechanical switches, which put plainly are optical switches that use light to register keystrokes rather than metal contacts. This gives a longer lifespan and faster response time. 
If you want to know a more detailed description of these new switches, check out my Huntsman Elite video that I'll have in the description. There are currently two options of the Huntsman line. I actually have a video comparing the two, which I'll also have down in the description. The Huntsman is a fairly minimalistic keyboard. It has the same metal backplate construction of the Huntsman Elite, but essentially it's just the board with the optomechanical switches without any of the flashy extras of the Elite version. The Huntsman is available in both black and new quartz pink color options, and you can find the Huntsman for around 150 bucks. The Elite, on the other hand, brings with it a bunch of extras, including dedicated media keys and the multifunctional digital dial above the number pad. The Huntsman also has the hypershift capability to turn any key into a macro key, and as I'm sure you guys have seen by now, they have that snappy light bar that wraps around the entire board and removable magnetic wrist rest. And if you're into RGB and customizability, the Huntsman Elite offers a whopping 168 customizable lighting zones. The underglow itself has 38 zones and the wrist rest itself has 24, giving you a ton of options for creating your own look. Another neat feature is the potential for added accessories. The wrist rest connects to the keyboard and gets its power for the light bar with a set of pogo pins, which could be used in the future to connect other accessories to the Huntsman Elite. Although so far, all of the potential extras that I've heard thrown around are just ideas at this point. The Huntsman Elite has an MSRP of $200, which I think makes it an easy recommendation over the Huntsman for 50 extra bucks for all of the extras that you get, unless you want the pink one, which is only available in the normal Huntsman. And just for fun, I'm going to go down the line and give you guys a typing test between the Sinosa, the Ornata, and all four different switch types of Razer switches. Well, that's it for the video guys let me know in those comments down below which one of these keyboards is your favorite and of course you can give this video a like if you enjoyed it to show your support while you're down there of course if you're new here on the channel i'd love to see you subscribe as i've got a lot more videos like this coming for you in the near future but as always guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one